Hello, okay, so um, this is the last video part that is going to be for SBM Physics Form 4, Chapter 4, Heat, that is Understanding the Gas Law, Part 2, because previously in the first part of the gas law, I've already explained the three gas laws, which is Ball's Law, Charles Law, and Pressure Law. So this particular video is a summary of that three law, how to explain them using kinetic theory of gases, and also um, exercises on how to answer this gas laws. Alright, so at the end of this last video or lesson, you'll be able to solve problems using pressure, temperature, and volume of a fixed mass of gas. So summary, Ball's Law states that for a fixed mass of gas, the pressure of the gas P is inversely proportionate to its volume V when the temperature T is kept constant. So the formula is P inversely proportionate to V or P1 V1 equals to P2 V2. And we have the graph for Ball's Law. All right, Charles Law states that for a fixed mass of gas, the volume of the gas V is directly proportionate to its absolute temperature T when its pressure P is kept constant. So please remember, absolute temperature means that the unit or the scale uses Kelvin. Alright, so V is directly proportionate to T or V1 over T1 equals to V2 over T2. So this graph, volume versus temperature, if it's in Kelvin, it's a directly proportionate. But if it is uh, volume versus temperature, but the unit is in degrees Celsius, the x-intercept will be at negative 273. Pressure law states that for a fixed mass of gas, the pressure of the gas P is directly proportionate to its absolute temperature T when its volume V is kept constant, or pressure directly proportionate to absolute temperature, or formula P1 over T1 equals to P2 over T2. So this is the graph for pressure versus absolute temperature. Okay, now let's explain Ball's law. When the volume of the gas is decreased, the number of molecules per unit volume inside the container will increase. So the same number of molecules moves in a smaller space. The molecules will then collide more frequently with the walls of the container, hence right, resulting the increase of pressure exerted by the gas. Charles' law, right, when gas is heated, the average kinetic energy of the molecule will increase when the temperature of the gas increases. So the rate of collision between the molecules and the walls will increase if the volume is kept constant. If the gas is allowed to expand, the, gas, the faster molecules will now move into a bigger space. Right? It will move bigger space. Therefore, the rate of collision between the molecules and the walls remain constant and hence pressure will also remain constant. Lastly, for pressure law, when a gas is heated, the average kinetic energy increases. Therefore, temperature of the gas increases. The container is not allowed to expand, so volume is fixed. The faster moving molecule will strike the wall of the container more frequently. Thus, pressure of the gas increases. So this is actually the explanation for Ball's Law, Charles' Law, and Pressure Law. Alright, so these three gas laws, how are we going to remember? So this is how I normally use to remember, okay? So Ball's Law, alright? Ball's Law actually sounds like the word boil. So when water is at boiling point, the temperature will be constant at 100 degrees Celsius, isn't it? That we learned previously in the previous uh, subtopic. So therefore, Ball's Law happens when temperature constant. Charles' Law will make me recall of Prince Charles. Right, some of you, if you do not know who Prince Charles is, he's Prince Charles of Wales, uh, which is Prince William and also Prince uh, Henry's father. So because His Majesty is a prince, therefore he will have to stand a lot of pressure. Therefore, hence, Charles' law happens when pressure constant. Lastly, pressure law makes me think of the pressure cooker. So, 
When cooking food using the pressure cooker, the cover will be covered and hence the volume inside the pressure cooker will be fixed, isn't it? So therefore, pressure law happens when the volume is constant. So I hope this method can help you to recall and how to use Ball's law, Charles law and pressure law. Okay, let's try exercise. Question 1. The air in a foot pump has an initial volume of 2,800 cm3 and the pressure of 100 kPa. The outlet of the pump is closed and the piston pushed inwards until the volume of the air becomes 700 cm3. What is the pressure of the compressed air inside the pump? Do you notice one thing? The whole entire question talks about volume and pressure. The temperature is not mentioned. So from the information that we get from the question, initial volume V1 is 2,800 cm3. Initial pressure P1 is 100 kPa. And the final volume V2 is 700 cm3. Temperature is not mentioned means that the temperature is constant, hence Boyle's law. Solution, right? Boyle's law states that P1 V1 equals to P2 V2. So I rearranged it because that's what we want to find, the pressure of the compressed air P2. So P1 is 100 kPa, so 100 times 10 to the power of 3. Volume, 2,800 cm3 over 700 cm3. Over here, if you notice, I did not change centimeter cube to meter cube. Why? Because it will be cancelled off anyway. So, putting this into your calculator, you will get the answer to be 400,000 Pascal or 400 kilo Pascal. So, easy, isn't it? You just need to identify the information given and find out what is not mentioned. If whatever that is not mentioned, it's considered to be constant. Then you'll know which uh, law to use. Alright, okay, so now let's go to another question. A cylinder contains 200 cm3 of gas at a temperature of 27 degrees Celsius. The gas is heated until its temperature increases by 30 degrees Celsius. If the piston of the cylinder expands under constant pressure, Okay, what is the final volume of the gas? The information provided, initial volume V1 is 200 cm3. Initial temperature is given to be 27 degrees Celsius, but remember, if it's related to temperature, we need to change to the absolute temperature, which is in Kelvin. So 27 plus 273, we will get 300 Kelvin. Final temperature, the temperature increases by 30 degrees Celsius, which means... T2 equals to 27 degrees Celsius plus 30 degrees Celsius, I will get 57 degrees Celsius. Again, changing it to absolute temperature, 57 plus 273, I will get 330 Kelvin. Alright, it's stated in this quest sentence here that it is under constant pressure. Constant pressure will be experienced by Prince Charles, so Charles Law. So the solution is using Charles law, V1 over T1 equals to V2 over T2. We want to find V2, the final volume. So let V2 to be the subtract, equals to V1 over T2 divided by T1. Substitute the values in 200 times 330 divided by 300. So I'll get the answer to be 220 centimeter cube. So this is the final volume. Easy, isn't it? Identify the information, list it out, identify what is not mentioned or what is constant, then use the formula. Remember when you do working, right, please make sure that you change the thing that you want to be the subject first. With the formula, then only you substitute the answers in. It will reduce careless mistake when you are trying to use your calculator and doing uh, solving out the equation later on. Okay, let's try another more challenging question. As shown in figure 1, block P of mass 7 kg at 90 degrees Celsius, okay, and block Q of mass 3 kg at 30 degrees Celsius, given the specific heat capacity of P 
is 4,900 joule per kg per degree Celsius, and the specific heat capacity of Q is 300, sorry, 3,800 joule per kg per degree Celsius. When block P and Q are in contact with each other, assume there is no loss of, no energy loss to the surrounding. What is the final temperature of P and Q if they are in thermal equilibrium? So thermal equilibrium means that the heat, all right, which means one thing, I place block P and block Q next to each other. Thermal equilibrium means they are in thermal contact. Block P initial mass is 7 kg. Initial temperature theta P1 is 90 degrees Celsius. It will lose heat when in contact with block Q because block Q is only 30 degrees Celsius. Heat will transfer from P to Q. So when it transfers from P to Q, energy heat is lost. So temperature will drop. Final temperature, we assume that Q2, theta 2, sorry. So block Q, mass 3 kg. Initial temperature, theta Q1 is 30 degrees Celsius. When heat transfer from Q to P, it will absorb heat when it is in contact, so the temperature rises. So at thermal equilibrium, two condition one, no net rate of sorry, no net heat transfer, and the temperature of the final temperature is the same. So final temperature of block Q is theta two. So information provided is listed over here. Block P. Mass of P is 7 kg. Initial temperature, theta P1 is 90 degrees Celsius. Specific heat capacity, Cp, is 4,900 Joule per kg per degree Celsius. Block Q, the mass is 3 kg. Initial temperature, theta Q1 is 30 degrees Celsius. Specific heat capacity for block Q is 3,800 Joule per kg per degree Celsius. Thermal equilibrium means that rate of heat transfer is the same from P to Q and Q to P, and the final temperature, theta 2, is the same for both blocks. So using heat released by block P is equal to the heat absorbed by block Q with the assumption of no energy lost to the surrounding. So MP, Cp, change of temperature, all right, theta P1 minus theta P2 is equals to MQ, CQ, change of temperature for block Q, which is theta 2 minus theta Q1. Substituting the values in, 7 times 4,900 times 90 minus theta 2 equals to 3 times 3,800 and Theta 2 minus 300. So I will get 3,000, sorry, 3,087,000 3, minus 34,300 theta 2 equals to 11,400 theta 2 minus 342,000. Simplifying it, I get 45,700 theta 2 equals to 3,4,429,000, 4, therefore, theta 2 is 75.0 degrees Celsius. Please remember, be very careful when you're dealing with these mathematical equations over here. Alright, try to reduce careless mistake. Be very slow and steady when you do this calculation. So now we have found the final temperature. Next, we have to find the energy given by P during the process. Give the answer in unit kilojoules. So again, the information that is provided with the additional from question A, final temperature theta 2 is 75 degrees Celsius. Solution, heat released by block P, we use MC theta. So mass of P, specific heat capacity of P, and change in temperature of P. So mass of P is 7, specific heat capacity 4,900, Multiply by 90 degrees Celsius minus 75 degrees Celsius. Calculating it using the calculator, I get 514,500 joules. So this is the energy given by P during the process. So last question, 
Oh, they answer once in kilojoules. So it's 500 for 514.5 kilojoules. So the last question, find the energy absorbed by Q during the process. Remember the first question whereby we find the final temperature, we consider it to be in thermal equilibrium, isn't it? So thermal equilibrium means that heat released by block P is equal to the heat absorbed by block Q. So heat absorbed by block Q is equal to the heat released by block P, which is the one that we calculated in question B. 514.5 kilojoules. So it's simple as that. Step by step, slowly and do your calculation. All right, let's try another question. This is an example of SPM uh, Physics Paper 2, Section C. Diagram 4 shows an ice cream container used by an ice cream seller using his motorcycle. Right, you can see that there is the outer box and then there's ice cubes inside here or normally they use dry ice and then there's the ice cream box and the ice cream are placed inside so table 1 shows the specification of four types of ice cream containers p q r and s that can be used as by an by an ice cream seller to carry ice cream you are required to determine the most suitable ice cream container to carry the ice cream Study the specification of the four types of ice cream container based on the given aspect. Explain the suitability of each aspect. So this is a 10 mark question. So let's look at the specification. We have box P, Q, R and F. Specific heat capacity of the ice cream box, we have high and low. Size of the ice cream box, we have large and small. Material of the outer box, copper. PVC or aluminium and color of the outer box dark or bright so let's try characteristic number one specific heat capacity of the ice cream box has to be low so that it easily get cold and becomes cool quickly smaller size of ice cream box so it's easier to carry all right and also easy to become cold all right notice here if here is really easy to get cold this answer cannot be easy to become cold because the same answer can only be accepted once. Plastic PVC is to be used for the material of the outer box because PVC is a poor conductor of heat. Bright color of the outer box which means it does not absorb heat from the surrounding quickly. So the characteristic that we're going to choose is low specific heat capacity. Small size of the ice cream box, material use is PVC, and the color of the outer box is supposed to be bright. So the choice of a box that we're going to use is R, because low specific heat capacity of ice cream box, smaller size of ice cream box, plastic PVC of the material, and bright color for the outer box is used. Alright, in SPM when you answer paper 2 section C, Please make sure that you use a table like this to answer. Separate into two columns and just give simple straightforward answer. This particular box looks simple but it contains 10 marks. Easy as that, isn't it? So that is the end of chapter 4 heat for this particular chapter. And I hope that um, this few videos can actually help you to answer and understand chapter 4 heat even better. So that's all for chapter 4 hit. Thank you very much till another video that I'm going to make. So all the best for your SPM.